I have a problem with stalking people online. I like made a fake account like two years ago. What do you use the account for now? I currently log on daily. <laughs> you know, keep for your friends close, your enemies closer. Hello? Hello? Hey, is this Leah? Yes. What's going on? Um... Well, I am currently having a problem because I think I have a problem with, like, stalking people online. Okay. I, um, I, like, made a fake account, like, two years ago, and it's, like, still an obsession of mine. Mm -hmm. What made you want to make this fake account, and what do you do with it? Okay, so a long time ago, my dad had this girlfriend that actually left him because he slept with, she slept with my boyfriend. And so I made an account so I could, like, look at her profile and, like, see what she, like, was saying about us. And she accepted my friend request on, like, this fake account. So I just, like, continued it. And now I have, like, a bunch of people on there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so how long ago was it that you made this account to to look at your uh, father's uh, whatever's person's thing? Um, it was probably like late 2018, early 2019. All right, so it was a little bit ago. And um, what do you use the account for now? Um, I currently log on daily, <laughs> sometimes more. And I just, like, look at any post she posts and, like, any of my friends, like, my enemies, they're my friends on that account, I guess. Um, but, like, I look at whatever they got going on. Like, a lot of them post, like, all their drama on there. So I can kind of, like, get the inside details. Is your dad still engaged with this woman or are they done? No, no. They split up after she slept with my boyfriend. Okay. And why? What? What? What is causing you to still be interested in her life? I have absolutely no idea. Okay. <laughs> but um, I think it's just the curiosity of it all. And, like, she has, like, circles kind of close to my circles of, like, friend group. So I kind of just, like, you know, keep her, your friends close, your enemies closer. Your father's ex-girlfriend has is is has a lot of mutual friends with you. Yeah. Well, she was actually my friend first. But, like, she okay. didn't know my dad was my dad. Okay. Uh, who, what, what? Give me an example of another person that you follow on here and what your relationship to them is. Um, oh, wow. I wasn't expecting that question. Um, well, I have, like, my ex-boyfriend, girlfriend on there. Or, like, my ex-boyfriend's roommates or, like, people that are, like, close to the people that, like, have caused issues in my past. Okay. And you you log on every day and you're looking at updates and photos and whatnot from uh, your ex-boyfriend's new girlfriend, uh, her friends, his friends... Your dad's ex-girlfriends, all these people. You're, you're logging in every day and looking at uh, updates from them. Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And how do, do, you, do you get strong emotional reactions from these updates? Um, sometimes. Like, when I see her doing the same things that she did to me when we were friends... To other people like it gets me really mad because people don't see what I see in her because she like showed her true colors so like to me I want other people to see her like that but I'm not trying to like attack her or like put her information on Facebook or nothing like that like I don't want to look like the antagonist or anything but I am curious like how long she's going to get away with like doing the same thing to all these other people and your ex-boyfriend, when did you break up with him? Um, 2019. Okay, so you broke up with him three years ago. 
Yeah. Do you still talk to him? Um, he he constantly is trying different ways to like get a hold of me, but we actually split up because he was physically abusive. So, and she was one of the girls that like helped me pack my stuff and get away from him. And then like she went ahead and just like moved in after moving mm-hmm. me out. And do you think about uh, your your ex boyfriend a lot? I mean, I have a lot of like nightmares about him. I have like diagnosed PTSD because of like a lot of the shit. Oh, I don't know if I can say that. Sorry. You can, um, you can say whatever that, you want. Like he put me through. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm a little no, it's okay. Uh, okay. And have you ever made an attempt to... Have you ever considered deleting this Facebook account? Um, I want to. But a part of me, like, can't let go of it. Like, a part of me wants to just, like, move on and, like, forget all of that happened to me. Because... Like, my life has moved on, but, like, my my emotions are still so stuck in, like, that hurt. Like, that betrayal from, like, both sides. What do you think is is in between you and letting go of this stuff? If you had to really, really put it under a microscope. I think it's hard to move on because they're constantly around. Like... For example, so-and-so might work with one of my family members or this person I see every time I go to the store because they work there or like I because I live in a very like small area, like maybe 25 mile riding. So like we're constantly bumping into each other. Mm-hmm. And so like mm-hmm. I kind of like to know where they're at, where their mind's at. But like I do want to let go of it, but I'm afraid that the moment I do like something's going to get me hurt. Mm-hmm. So you're running into just, you know, as you're about town, living in a small town, you're running into your ex-boyfriend's friends. You're running into people from, uh, you know, you, that, that time in your life. And that's making it harder to let go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, so let's, let's get into now. We'll come back to this Facebook account. But what is your life like now? Um, well, I'm married. I'm trying to have a baby. I have a lot of fertility issues, so we're, it's kind of like the only option we have right now. So, you're married? Yes. <laughs> does your husband know about the account? He does, but he doesn't know, like the details of it like he doesn't know the name of it or he's not friends with it or anything but he does know it exists but my whole family kind of plays it off as a joke Mm -hmm. but they they, not just like you know whether or not it exists but does he know the um nature of it does he know why you use it yes he knows that i like look at people that i've had issues with in the past and i like friend them and look at their stuff Mm mm-hmm uh, how does he feel about that? Um, like I said, everybody kind of like plays it off as a joke. Nobody thinks it's like an issue, I guess. But me, everybody else is like, "Oh, that's like what girls do. Like they're little FBI agents, you know, yada yada." Interesting. And do they know that you've been doing it for three years? Yes. Yeah. Okay, but nobody My else seems to. Knows. <laughs> Nobody else funny, seems to believe that I it's a, uh, a serious issue. Everyone just kind of thinks it's like a funny thing. Yeah, everybody just kind of thinks it's like funny that nobody's noticed it's a fake account yet. Like I've taken mm-hmm. it this far and nobody like has picked up like, oh, this person doesn't even exist. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, interesting. Okay, but we know... That it's an issue. We know that you want to move on. I, I I don't know if we if I've asked you this yet, but do you do you have a desire to move on from from all of this? Yes, yes. I I want to delete it or deactivate it 
preferably delete it. But I have like nobody to really like hold me accountable to it. Like there's nobody that's like, hey, you should delete, you know, you should delete it. Like you should stop looking at it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, I mean, here's the here's the great thing about this yeah. is that uh, once you, you you can once you delete it, you can delete it forever. I know that Facebook Facebook does this fucking annoying thing that they do on purpose where you can deactivate it, which doesn't really do anything. It just logs you out. Uh, but you need to go yeah. in there and you need to delete it irreversibly. Um. And, yeah. you know, I, I feel like, and this is how I felt when I've, you know, had, had these, these sort of whatever things with uh, social media where, like, you know, if you ever find yourself in some sort of emotional, motivative state where you're like, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to delete it. Take advantage of that and just fucking delete it right in there. Because then when you are in that um, addict phase where you're like, no, I got to check, uh, you will not even be able to. Yeah. Yeah, I I definitely agree with that. I feel like I feel like talking about it is the first step I've really taken where somebody's like acknowledged that it's an issue because I've brought it up with like my dad before where I'm like like this is kind of crazy. Like I probably shouldn't be doing this, but it all started when people were like giving m information on my Facebook out to these people that I don't like. So I felt like if they're invading my privacy, I should be able to invade theirs. But mm. now that I look at it, like it's, it's just social media. Like it's not a reflection of their real life or my real life. It's just what, mm -hmm. we're, pu what we're putting out for people to see. Mm -hmm. So really this is like almost, I'm not getting any information inside. So, uh, honestly, outside of just, like, the nuts and bolts of there's a Facebook account that needs to be deleted, the, the, the larger issue is one of moving on from these people. Yeah. Which, you know, yeah. symbolically could be represented by deleting this Facebook account. But even after you delete it, uh, it's about how can you move on. And you have, the, you have a whole life, you know. I mean, the, the, one, the real way to move on from this previous time in your life is to dive deep into the time of your life that you are in right now. You are married. Uh, how long did you say? You, how long did you say you were married for? Um, it's been a little over like six, seven months. Okay, six or seven months. Um, are you happily married? Do you enjoy your relationship? Yes, one hundred percent. I've never felt so comfortable with somebody or so loved by someone. Like we really do have great communication. Like a wonderful partnership. Like, I'm incredibly grateful for him, especially for coming into my life when he did and how he did. So, yeah, he's okay. great. <laughs> okay. All right. So you're happily married. What, what, are, you, what are you doing you know, sort of professionally on your own outside of your relationships? Um, I'm, I'm a full-time student. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you, you have a life. Yeah. Um, so Leah, you, you're happily married. You're enjoying your life. Um, what, uh, uh, why do you think it is hard for you if you have a thing going on for yourself to, um, let, let everything in your past go? I think, okay. So going back to like the ex-boyfriend, why I look at his stuff? is because like he has a very large history of violence so for me i feel like keeping tabs on like where he's at or who he's with kind of gears me towards like okay stay away from these people this area like and you can you'll be safe but for my dad's ex-girlfriend i really feel like there's not really a motive behind looking at her stuff anymore like it doesn't there's not really a reason to look at her stuff anymore besides just like the odds that I would run into her. Mm -hmm. um, but the ex-boyfriend, I definitely do it because like it just makes me feel so much safer knowing what he's doing, where he's at, because it took me so long to get away from him that it just feels like so much more comfortable knowing that he's like 
on this side of town or staying around these people. Mm. This is really difficult because, uh, uh, you know, look, uh, uh, on one hand, I really get, uh, you know, I get it. I get why you're operating out of the sphere uh, because you really don't want to run into him. But I also I just I hate hearing that you're living your your that this fear is like policing your whole life and causing you to, you know, be on this Facebook account that you really shouldn't be on. Um, Yeah. And I'm trying to think of solutions for you. I mean, there's a few. I mean, look, if this guy really has done some terrible shit to you. I'm sure you have the grounds yeah. to get a to get a legitimate restraining order against him. Um, well, I think that's, actually, I think that's okay. a better idea. Okay, of, sure, hit me. Okay, I was 18 and he was 35. Um, he was straight out of like he just came out of prison and he was like getting back on his feet. And so we started dating. I had no idea what was going through my mind. Besides, I thought an older dude would bring me like more stability. I guess, but. One, like, it started getting, like, physically aggressive between me and him. And one day, like, I called my dad to come pick me up, and I never hung up the phone. Well, my dad heard him hit me. So my dad came. They got into a fight. Like, three months or three weeks later, my dad went back there and fought him again. And my ex-boyfriend ended up having to go to get metaphyted to the hospital. And so because of that, like, I, I mean... I've tried to get a restraining order. They have, well, their order of protections in my county, but I tried to get like a order of protection. But because my dad had instigated a problem with him, like they didn't want to get involved too much with it, so they just kind of told him, "Stay away from her. You stay away from him," because like it's already on police record and everything. So if anything like really happens between us, I guess those charges would be brought back up but they'd be brought up on my dad. So him, like him instigating things with me could potentially get my dad in legal trouble. But like, he's always like literally up until I got married, he was always like around and trying to like cause problems. And so that's kind of when I started the Facebook was as soon as I left him. All right. That was a lot. (laughs) <laughs> sorry. Uh, no, no, don't be sorry. I mean, this is a mess, dude. Um, this is. A, this I just is a feel total like the backstory kind of helps. Um, yeah, I know it does. It, it, like it, the backstory you know, helps clear, it, clarify it, well, my it craziness does. a little it, bit. It does. It does. It does. Because I, I think, you know, I kind of go from, you know, now that you give me this backstory, I, I, I kind of go from, you know, she needs to move on to now. Okay, this is coming from a point where. This is not, uh, you know, an ex that you're not over. This is your, uh, you know, p- policing, uh, uh, you know, his whereabouts out of out of out of your own, you know, fear for your safety. Um, yeah, and, and then and, and, and my it, and it dad's plugs me girlfriend into more at that why, time. Yeah. Go yeah, ahead. that was my dad's girlfriend at the time when all that happened, and then she went and like helped me move out, and then moved all of her stuff in. Like, as, like, all of this, like, legal stuff and this, like, all started erupting, she just, like, up and left my dad and moved in with my abusive boyfriend. So that's kind of, like, really why I started the account. And I want to, I want to, like, delete it. I really do. But I'm so afraid that, like, the moment I do, something's going to pop off, even though it's been three years. Leah, let me. Can I ask you this too? Um, yes. Leah, what what is what the fuck is stopping you from? And, and I know it's. I know there are a lot of situations where the answer to this question can get complicated. Um, and and I respect that. But I gotta ask, what the fuck is stopping you from leaving this shitty little town? What, what, what the fuck is stopping you from getting out of here? And I, 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 I hate, I, I get, I hate the, I, I hate the idea that this guy, you know, I get it. You have your friends here, you have your family here. I'm sure there's a lot of reasons. I'm gonna let you speak in a second, but there's a lot of reasons why. And I hate the idea that, you know, you almost are, you know, this this guy is like, you know, has the power to make you leave. I, I, I hate that idea. But what, what, what is stopping you from leaving, man? 
I hate this place. Um, we actually plan on leaving in um, next April or March. Wonderful. So we Wonderful. have like a little savings account that we started. It just it does stuff because like me and my husband met here, so of course he has his family, I have mine, but my family kind of we are a whole different group of dysfunction. So like we kind of are all spread out. We don't really talk to we talk to each other, but not like we used to. So it's just like for me, we do want to get out of here. We we do plan on it because it's a very toxic, conservative like backward town like everything's kind of corrupt mm-hmm. i'm uh i'm so glad to hear that you're leaving uh L- leah i i think i think you should delete the facebook account i think that you should okay. f- just focus on getting the fuck out of there and if you get if you just if you get anything out of this phone call uh, your your brain is like wrapped up in all of the everything that that happens to you in this small shitty town, and I'm just telling you, if 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 you fucking get anything out of this, I want it to be that like you're so young, don't let your view of the world and view of relationships be defined by what happened in this fucking place. Just as soon as you can, yeah, fucking leave it behind. And go to a new place and move on from this stuff and form a new life. Cause you you just can't your 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 life is too valuable to be poisoned by a bunch of bullshit going on with these fucking people that don't matter anymore. And you should just you should just leave and find a new course for your life and delete that fucking Facebook account thank you I'm actually sorry I'm crying <laughs> I don't know if you get that response often but That's, that kind of hit okay. home for me right now good. Um, good I'm actually deleting it right now <laughs> I'm typing in my password to delete it fuck are you really you're deleting it right now yeah <laughs> good yeah, please it's delete about it time. it's about time please delete it um. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you give me that backstory, it, it, it gives me a, a different perspective onto why you held on to it for so long. I hope that you have a real therapist, by the way, that you can. Because I'm not. I don't know how to fucking actually yes. help yes, people deal I with their do. trauma and whatnot. I hope you have a real therapist that can help you deal I with do. the trauma of all these things. <laughs> um, we're kind of working through God, my just, childhood. We're hopefully we'll good. make it. We're up to eighteen soon, but good, good. Um, also, I want to apologize for the way I hopped on the call because I thought I was talking to one of your two guys again, which they are so nice, by the way. Oh, of course, no, don't you're not apologize for anything. Cool. Um, I actually didn't know I was on the air. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I. I hope you really internalize that. I hope you really make an effort to move on. I hope you never fucking think about these people ever again. They're not worth it. Your your life is too short and valuable for you to spend any of your headspace in just all this fucking bullshit. And um, I'm very excited for you that you are leaving soon. Yes, thank you. Of course. Um, is is there anything else that you uh, want to say to uh, me or the people at the computer or that we didn't get to or final thoughts or just anything like that? Um, I just want to say that I had a lot of adrenaline during the first, like, five minutes of the call. So it was kind of messy, but I hope I got the whole situation out so it kind of makes sense. <laughs> mm-hmm. Thank you very much for sharing. And uh, seriously, good luck to you as you, you move forward on this. Thank you so much. You've been a really great help. Awesome. Thank you for calling, Leo. Hello? Hello. Hey, is this uh, Riley? Yeah, is this Gekasaurus Rex? Uh, yeah, how's it going? It's, it's going okay. It's going good, pretty good. I'm uh, on a family vacation right now. Oh, you're on a family vacation. Where, where at? Montana. Who goes on vacation to Montana? 
people from Wyoming? Uh, when I think of Montana and I think of Wyoming, I, I truly think about, I imagine the same place. I mean, yeah. Do you want me to, to draw you a, a map with my words? Sure. Okay, so Wyoming is like just south and it's sandwiched between Colorado and Montana. Right. Mm -hmm. So all of Wyoming is like flat, except for some parts that have mountains, but it's terribly windy and all the mountains are kind of like lame and it makes it so nobody wants to live there. If you go to Montana, it's slightly less windy and there's cooler mountains, plus there's rivers in Montana. So, but they're basically the same place. Riley, it says here that you have a secret YouTube channel in which you quote do weird shit and you are afraid <laughs> of somebody finding it because you fear the reaction of your friends and family tell me um tell me more about this youtube channel what exactly do you mean by weird shit yeah so i mean it's not all weird shit some of it's like mostly normal um but like most recently i've been working on a video about a snake that I found that was dead and I had a funeral for it. It was, it's actually kind of a sad story. I, there's like this little baby rattlesnake outside the door of the warehouse that I work in. And I was there late at night cause I, I lived in like a campground in like a trailer and I don't have a shower. So I was there late showering and he was so cute. I took a video of him and the next day I found him dead in the gutter. So I had a dramatic episode and decided to have a funeral for it and i just think that's not really a normal thing to do i think that's uh that's nice that you you know formed this brief yet passionate connection and uh i can i can see why you had a need to mourn it why do you believe that your friends and family would respond negatively to this snake funeral video? So, uh, I don't think my immediate family would be, like, weirded out by it because they already know I'm weird. But, like, my extended family on my dad's side, they, um, they're a little, like, judgmental. <laughs> mm. And I get, I get some of that just for, like, the weird stuff I do anyways. Um, like they, an example would be like, they'd be appalled that all summer I've been living in a camper trailer in like a campground. They just think that's, that's not the way to live. And so Riley, why, like, Riley, well, Riley, why, Riley, why do you care what your extended family thinks about you, what you do with your, you know, time? Why, why does it matter if they think that something you do is weird? So I don't think it doesn't really matter to me a whole lot, but I'm just worried I'm going to get, like, weird comments at family reunions being like, oh, I saw you on YouTube, like, playing with a dead snake. That's fucking weird. Why are you like this? Because I, I already get, like, some of that. Riley, um, I, I, listen... You can't you can't live your life or not live your life based on what your extended family might say to you at at the occasional family reunion. Mm -hmm. It's a terrible way to live. So okay, there's another part to this story. What is it? It is a terrible way to live. It's more like so that's part of the reason why I haven't told people about it. Cause I'm not necessarily worried about people finding out about it. I'm trying to decide if I should like tell people about it and like advertise that I'm doing this and be like, look at the things I've made or if it should just be like a privately creative thing. So okay. I'm worried that if I like tell all my friends and family about it and like I put it online and I like kind of brand myself with it that like I may have to take on some responsibility of being like an influencer and I'm not sure if I want to be in the spotlight like that. Even if it's only, like, with 5,000 people or, or, like, less. Okay. Uh, let's explore that. You make these videos. You make yes. them at this, at this very moment. 
You make them for an audience of virtually no one, correct? Yes, except myself. Okay. You make them for yourself out of your own enjoyment. Um, you are debating whether or not to uh, take it further and attempt to actually have people watch these things that you do. You're like a, I don't want to use the word vlogger, but you do miscellaneous, uh, non, uh, you do miscellaneous, somewhat deviant things, such as hold funerals for snakes. Yeah. Um, yeah. You enjoy doing those things. You enjoy documenting them uh, just for yourself. And you're wondering whether or not you should show them to other people. Uh, okay, so when you're thinking about the pros as to why you might want an audience of people to watch you hold snake funerals, what would those pros be? So, I think about the financial incentive, for sure, if it ever came to that. I wouldn't, I don't think I would, like, leave my career path to be, like, run off and be a YouTuber. But if it ever got, like, big enough to make a little bit of money... That would be nice. Not gonna lie. Um, you know what? That, especially that's since a... the kind of lifestyle I want to live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially mm -hmm. since the kind of lifestyle I want to live is a little more remote and like would harder be harder to hold down like a stable job. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of freedom within that if I were able to make money from it one day. Uh, you know, Riley, I think theory. that's a, I, I I think that's a legitimate that's a legitimate reason. Um, to to want to do that i think that there is a lot of i think there's a lot to be gained on trying to build a business based on the things that you're passionate about and i think that that is uh completely within reason for you to do if that's what you want to do mm -hmm. uh so tell me yeah. more about the cons then well i would be kind of putting myself out there um and like i think that there's a certain there's a certain desirability to privacy and that's mm -hmm. something that i really tend to value just in general like i don't i don't want people like kind of around me i like i like my stuff to be very private and i know that about myself so i'm worried that eventually if people were to watch this i would feel like i'm losing some of that and like mm -hmm. that would bother me eventually, but I'm not sure because I've never been in that scenario. I'm gonna give you advice that I think I'm one of the only few people that can that can give this. Um, you should wear a costume of some kind. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. This, you, you know, that's not a bad idea. You should wear a costume of some because I go out in public. And nobody has ever, ever, ever with no costume. It's happened maybe two or three times uh, where somebody has, has said to me, hey, you're the guy from TikTok. Uh, when I wear the costume, I get it a lot. But if I'm not wearing the costume, I have my complete and other privacy. So if you're afraid of that, but you still want to try to build a... a brand or business on uh, being yourself and doing the things that you enjoy, which I think is a worthwhile thing to pursue. I really do. I don't think, uh, you know, people might have their opinions of, of whatever, but I, I think it's a worthwhile thing to do if you want to do it and you're concerned about your privacy, wear a costume, maybe a snake, and then do your, your vlogs or whatever it is you do. Yeah, I was going to ask you what kind of costume should I wear? I can't tell you that. You have to decide that on your own. The gecko came to me. Okay. And your animal will come to you okay. as well. Did it, did it come to you in a dream or like a vision or did it just like hit you? It came to me in an Someone Amazon box. Someone throw a gecko at you? Oh. That makes sense. Uh, Riley, I mean, listen. Bef bef before box. we go, do you out, out of the, tell me tell me your out of out of what I have told you over the course of this conversation? What are your thoughts? I'm thinking that I don't know if the costume idea would work for me. I think it's a good idea, but some of the content I also make is like nature based where I like hike because I'm like a I'm like a park ranger kind of. And so I make a lot of like 
outdoor content and i don't know if mm-hmm. it'd be all that practical for me to walk around at, at work and like okay when i'm outside hiking in in like a tiger costume or something mm-hmm. but i'm kind of leaning towards putting it out there just to kind of see what happens with it okay i think because you know what i i don't i like doing you know, it please go and, ahead. yeah yeah, I like doing it, and I think that as long as I like doing it, that if people watch, it's okay. But I'm not sure. Like, I'm I'm scared of what's going to happen in the future. But I'm gonna I'm gonna not think about that. I think. Yeah. Two final things with that is, uh, you know, you're afraid. You're you're telling me that you're afraid of like what your extended family will think of you doing these snake funerals, and you know, Riley, your life is gonna be a lot better if you choose to just fucking live freely and not give a fuck about what people think of you um and if you want to maintain your privacy this is the second thing there's a lot of ways for you to do that i mean so there are some extremely famous and successful uh internet people who have never shown their faces before you could just make videos where you are hiking through the woods and just talking and the camera is facing the um the the trail i mean you could give your snake funeral video without showing your face so there's a lot of different ways to do it if you want to do it but uh trying and, try and get over fixating on what your extended family or anyone else on the internet might think of you and what you do mm-hmm. you know Gek, that's a really good point i didn't really consider just not putting my face in it yeah, you don't have to. You can make a really good videos, videos without putting your face the in there. Yeah, no, I mean, there's that's the thing. If you scroll through, if you, uh, I, I, dude, I could talk about TikTok and the internet creator economy shit forever. Because like, if you scroll through TikTok or YouTube, you will find many, many, many creative people who have found uh, different ways to express themselves uh, that are not the standard. Mm-hmm. Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome back to my whatever fucking thing. You know, so mm-hmm. take that into consideration. Uh, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the okay. computer before we go, Riley? You know what? I, I'm feeling spontaneous and inspired, inspired right now. Good. And I think I should just do it. Can I plug myself? If you would like to, sure. Okay. Uh, it's Riley Does Alaska. You live in Alaska? Like all one word. I lived in Alaska. I don't live in Alaska anymore. I want to live in Riley Alaska. Riley does Alaska. Okay, I'm going to check out your videos because I'm trying to go to Alaska soon and maybe they'll have some insight for me. Okay. I'll be your tour guide. Where do you, where in Alaska? Yeah, you don't have to tell me all that shit, but um, where in Alaska should I go if okay. I want to be a gecko there and do stuff? Anchorage is cool. There's a lot of people there. But if you want to like see real Alaskan people, go to Fairbanks. Cause they're they're gruff and tumble up in Fairbanks, and go okay, sit on the mind. University of Alaska Fairbanks campus. Man, I didn't know they had college in Alaska. I thought it was just like bears. Yeah. Thank you for calling, Riley. There's bears too. Thanks, guys. Bye. Let's talk to Kimbo. Hello. How are you, Kimbo? Oh, there's a yeah. I'm good. I'm good. I actually um, I have COVID right now. Um, but I'm doing good. Uh, what's going on with you? So, um, the past year I have been recovering from a traumatic brain injury that I sustained at work and I'm starting in grad school at the end of the month with accommodations and yeah, (laughs) a lot going on with that. Um, well, can I, can I mention what you told the call screener? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it says here that you are a, uh, a future sex therapist. I assume that's what you're going to grad school for. Yeah, Um, that's what I'm going to school for. And you are having trouble finding love. Yeah. That sounds really cheesy to hear it repeated back to me, but it's true. Okay. Are you, are you in your head, like, I'm going to start projecting onto you and you tell me if it's accurate in your head. Are you like, how am I supposed to help? 
couples with sex therapy if if I myself cannot find love? I've definitely had that creeping fear, mm-hmm. but I I don't know I like I re- I've reflected on my situation. Like first of all, when you have a traumatic brain injury, you should not date people. That's a that's not good. Mm-hmm. Um, but I now that I've been cleared to start approaching life again um, by my neurologist, I'm like. Oh man, I don't really have an excuse anymore and I have to actually like start dating again and I don't really enjoy dating. Okay, well, um, c- if I could back up for like a second here. <laughs> if I could back up for a yeah. second and you laugh because you yeah. know what I'm going to say. Why you're why is this so immediately presenting itself as like a chore that you have to do? Why do you why do you why are you saying it like that, that you, that you have to now go out and date people? Well, well, no. I guess it's not a ch- I guess I was talking about it like it's a chore. <laughs> um, it's more like, well, like, like there are people I'm interested in. I think it's because, okay, so I'm, I'm demisexual, which means... I I can't really use dating apps or things like that because I need an emotional connection before I can even find a person attractive. Mhm. So so just I, I feel like every like I feel like most of dating right now is dating apps. And then I'm I'm try I also I want I want my my partner to be Jewish. And that just really narrows the dating pool. And yeah, I just, I do feel like my intersection, my intersecting identities make dating difficult. But it you're also means hunt. that I really understand myself. I was going to say do you're I on the sound hunt like for I'm an, on the hunt? No, I was going to say you're on the hunt for an NJM. A nice, a nice Jewish, Jewish man. man. A nice Jewish man. Um, oh. Sorry, well, continue. I I, I want to hear the rest of, of your of your thoughts about this this area of your life. So okay, so I'm I'm feminine presenting, non-binary. I'm Jewish, demisexual, I'm pansexual. I'm kinky, but. I'm not kinky until once we start having sex. So I go from basically like very, very like asexual to being very sexual. And which like anyone, anyone listening to this who has dated a demisexual can understand why that would be confusing or frustrating. Mm -hmm. Um, And you know, it's a shame that you don't like the dating ass because you just wrote yourself a very descriptive uh, dating profile bio. Thank, thank. Well, I I really know myself, but I've also been told that I'm extremely intimidating for all those reasons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. so, I've got a couple questions for you. One is, uh, yeah. why, why are you looking for a partner? Um, I'm a very romantic person, and I love infusing romance into my own life, my, my friendships, um, my relationship with the universe. Um, but I would like to be able to channel that into a person or people, um, romantically. That would be really nice. And I just, I've been, I haven't been in a relationship that's been longer than six months in almost six years. So I just feel like I've had a lot of time to get to know myself and I really want to share myself with with others romantically. That was a a very poetic and introspective answer, which is that's a good sign. That's that's better than I am a very poetic, introspective person. <laughs> that's be, that's a lot better than just saying uh, I, I'm afraid to be alone. So that's a good place to start. Um, okay, no, now I, I want. I actually enjoy my own company a little too much. 
Sure, sure. No, I, I understand that. I understand that. Um, I want... Okay, so let's go back to... At the very beginning of this, you were, like, looking at dating as a chore. Um, and you were like, oh, I have to date again. And you were saying it in this very negative way. And then, just now, you gave us this whole... I am a romantic person. I want to share a part of myself, which is like the complete opposite of the way that you were describing your romantic vision at the beginning of this. Right. Okay. So would you say that well, what you just said now is, I, is more reflective of the truth? Yes. I, don't, I, think, I think part of the problem is that I am clearly picky. Like, I know I've been single long enough to know exactly what I want. So it's not as if I don't have opportunities. Um, I think I'm also oblivious when people um, are into me, so, mm -hmm. which is uh, another layer to this. So I think the way I was talking about dating before is reflective of my apprehension around m miscommunications that can occur. Mm -hmm. Uh. I think being picky is a good thing, in 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 most aspects of life. I think, I think I don't know about most, but in a lot of aspects of life, being picky is a good thing. And I think, uh, you know, with your romantic partner, you yeah, you you fucking should be picky. You're trying to find a person to be with for the rest of your life. You should be extremely picky about that if that's what you are looking for. Um, but yeah. I do want to try. I want to try to change your mind on one thing. Oh, let's hear it. I think I think that if you are really in, I mean, I hate dating apps. I don't I don't like them at all. But I I feel like if you're trying to put yourself out there for the maximum opportunity to meet the kind of person that you want to meet, I think you should be less afraid of them. I'm not afraid of the app. I'm actually more, I, I, I'm not trying to dismiss what you're saying. I appreciate no, your it. approach to this. No, hit me, dismiss me all you, I'm, I'm not, down. <laughs> no, no, respectfully dismissing you. Um, I feel that the apps are a misrepresentation of opportunity. We think because we're seeing hundreds of people a day scroll past us, especially if you're like myself and you select everyone, as far as who who is shown to you, those aren't truly opportunities. There's, you know, there's probably only a few people on that app that you can truly connect with. And I have found in my experience with dating apps that people grossly misrepresent themselves. And I show up extremely authentically. Um, I feel that people wear a mask when they're dating, which we all do to a degree because we want to represent the best parts of ourselves, right? For sure. uh, we want to make a good impression. Mm -hmm. But I accept the bad parts of myself that I don't particularly like. And my friends embrace that about me. And I embrace that about my friends. And I, I think to love someone fully, you have to accept the negative parts of them, right? However, when... When someone who is in denial about the parts of themselves that they dislike and someone shows up in their life and says, oh, no, I see that in you and I love that part of you, even though I don't like it. That is terrifying. That's extremely uncomfortable for people. Mm -hmm. So well, it let, can actually so that kind of accept. I think everything I think everything no, you're ahead. saying, <laughs> I think everything you're saying is great. You know, I think that. You sound like you're comfortable being authentically yourself. You sound like you're not afraid of being authentically yourself, which is really important as you're going out into the dating world. But what you just said to me has nothing to do with dating apps. Because the I think what people get wrong about these apps is that all these profiles, they're representations of real people. So, uh, like, it can seem artificial and whatnot, but... Once you are connected with another human oh, being I mean over once this you app, meet them. yes. Once you're connected with another person over this app, it's almost as if you met at a, at at the freaking coffee shop that you meet them at in person. It is, it is, the the app is no longer a relevant part of the interaction. So I I, I understand what you're saying, but I I don't think it's relevant to to dating apps. 
You might be right about that. Um, I think, I think what, so the element in like revealing your true self that I was re- referencing that, yeah. that seemed kind of like it, it wasn't answering your question. The element that's missing it is time and pacing. And I really, um, I really need a lot of time tra- like with transition. So, okay. and being demisexual, it's, it, when you're demisexual, it's really like you're asexual until you're not, until you have an emotional connection with the person. Where was I headed with that? But Kimbo, you live in a world where you can go on the computer, you can go on OK Cupid, and you can, I mean, take advantage, for God's sake, I take know, advantage. In- you can go, I know. Kimbo, you right, can go to OK Cupid. You can, there's a little, people. you can hit little, you can hit a little checkbox that says, you can hit, a, there's a checkbox. It says filter out by Jewish demisexual. Do I not sound like someone who's willing to flirt with people? I just all, all I'm, I'm saying. All I'm, I'm saying to you. Sorry, I'm no, just I'm know. from New Jersey. It says we don't know how it's to. It's okay. Work. It's okay. All I'm saying to you is that if this is important to you, you should try. You should put in. You know, you put in the effort where you can. That's all I'm saying. And I feel like you're <sighs> dismissing like the am. dating apps if that's what you wanted. You know, I feel like dismissing oh, the dating dismissing apps the dating is app. a mistake. That's all I'm saying is I think it's a mistake because you live in in a world where it, never before could you go on a website and and go show me Jewish demisexual guys at this <laughs> age that live in this location and the computer goes yes here you go take advantage of that. That's all I'm saying. I mean, um, you're, you're listen, not Kimbo, and there's even Kimbo, Jay's wife, but. There's J Swipe. There's J Date. There's a coffee meat. Uh, what is the bagel locks thing? <laughs> there's some bagel meats locks, whatever the fuck it is. Anyway, Kimbo, um, before we go, d- do you have any final thoughts uh, uh, about anything that we have talked about over the course of this phone call? Or anything you want to say to the people at the computer? <sighs> um, I'll say two things. One, I will, cr- I will reconsider dating apps. I appreciate you um, putting that back on my radar. And, Good. And then to everyone else, I'll say, surround yourself with really good people. And just love one another. And um, don't let a kind word slip your mind. Like, if there's something kind or loving you want to say to a person, don't be embarrassed to say it. You should just say it. Thank you for calling, Kimbo. Have a great night. And by the way, if it makes you feel any better about the whole sex therapist trying to find love thing, I reluctantly <laughs> I reluctantly give relationship advice to people all the time. I've never been in a serious relationship. I have no business giving the advice, but I do it anyway because this is the internet. And you can do whatever you want on here. Including be a gecko. Hello. Uh, hello. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I am doing pretty good as well. What are you up to at this very moment in time? Uh, I'm in bed. I have to go to sleep soon. Yeah, you sound really tired. You also sound like you're very far away from the phone. Uh... I'm pretty uh, pretty close next to my ear. Yeah, I uh, have to wake up at five for work. Uh, what do you do? Uh, I'm a welder. Okay, what kind of stuff do you weld? Uh, pretty much like marine pipes, stainless steel, aluminum, carbon steel. You know, it's usually the fun stuff. My well, Christian, activity. I will make this phone call quick so that you can get to bed. Uh, how can I get you today? Um, I was talking to your uh, amazing uh, person, Tim, and uh, pretty much I wanted to call you because, like, this has like been a recent epiphany for me. Um, I recently quit porn. Well, trying to, it's still pretty hard because um, I feel like I'm addicted to it, and it's not. And I understand, like, it was always, like, a negative thing about it. But I, you know, recently that I just got a girlfriend, it's just been more 
apparent that, yeah, I should stop doing this. What sorts of things have you been noticing that are keying you into the idea that you have an addiction? It's more of like, um, like I like watching POV porn. Um, I like pretending that, uh, am I allowed to like curse? Do I have to? You can say whatever you want. You can graphically describe the pornography that you're watching. Uh, As long as it's not illegal, you can say whatever you want. No, 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 no. It's, it's all, it's all, you know, regular stuff, but it's basically POV. I, you know, I pretend that the penis is my penis and you know yep. whatever porn star that i come across i'm like i imagine myself being there i like i like when they show the penetration because i feel like oh snap i could feel this like this is something that i want to feel yeah. and uh yeah it's not it's definitely not healthy so i'm just I, I took a step back you know my favorite porn stars you know gina valentina you know the big name ones lana gray uh blake blossom all, all of them all of them gorgeous okay gorgeous bodies and uh yep. yeah it's not a, uh, it's not healthy so i, I like pulled a step back especially because i recently got a girlfriend and she's gorgeous and you know i don't want to be thinking about all of those women and all of their bodies while i'm with my girlfriend i think that that is a great reason to uh to stop it seems like you've identified it as an issue and you're working to correct it yes so is your but issue uh, that no continue please um you are the second person i ever told that i had this type of problem i've like it's been a it's like it's been a consistent thing like since i was like 14 i'm 28 who is the first uh my brother okay what'd your brother say uh he understood. He he didn't understand the uh, the full extent of it until I recently ex- I, I explained it to him, and uh, he was like, "Wow, uh, yeah." I mean, he's like pretty much encouraging me to keep it up. He's like, "Don't completely go cold turkey." He's like, "You know, you know, you could do it like at least once a week." And I'm like, "I can't. Like, I I physically can't. Cause I then I just go crazy." So you're attempting to do this just cold turkey. You're going to quit porn forever. Yeah. I mean, eventually when I have a, a grasp of it and I could actually go like, instead of like, like, let's just say tonight, like if I do it, then tomorrow, if I do it again, then the next day that I'm like, okay, then the, the habit is continuing. Mm-hmm. So I, then that's when I'm like, I'll, pull back but if i could do it so once, when is the different... last time that you did it that you watched porn uh yesterday okay and before that uh, what was your um what was your longest streak without watching porn a month a month okay so you did a month how was that month for you Oh, it was pretty good. Um, like working out, I felt better. You know, sleep was better. You know, being more intimate with my girlfriend. I never had a performance problem with my girlfriend. It was always a fear because of the amount of porn I watch, and um, like to, to have a performance issue. But it was never an issue. And then after I realized it was not an issue, then you know, obviously, like I continued. You know, the sex, the sex got better and all that stuff. I was more sensitive down there. And yeah, it was again. This was. Uh, a stat full of pluses. Okay. In the midst of your addiction, when it's at its worst, how many times a day are we uh, are we hopping on the hub? Uh, like eight, nine. Okay. Okay. Is yeah. it nine? That we're jerking off to completion nine times. Yes. Okay. You know, I'm gonna be. Honest, I'm gonna tell you something. Going from jerking off to completion nine times. In a day. Was it nine times in a day every day? No, it's usually like once a day, but like on the weekends when I have nothing better to do, I'm like, I'm really going at it. Okay. Um, to go from 
Oh, well, once a day is, is not that bad. But I mean, every, everybody has sort of their own metric as to what is that bad that they decide for themselves. But regardless, to go from that to a full month is pretty great. So this is something you have achieved already. Now tell me, what caused that month to end? When did you have your relapse? Uh, my girlfriend caught COVID, so I haven't seen her in like two weeks. Okay. And so um, because you were not able to be intimate with your girlfriend, you went back to jerking off. Yes. Yes. Now, were you jerking off? Was this no jerking off or just no porn? Uh, cold turkey. No jerking off, no porn. Okay. Um, and so, in the past two weeks, how often have you been jerking off? Uh, probably, like, in total, like, five times. A day? Or five times in total in the week? No, just five. Yeah, five times in total in two weeks. Christian, you sound like, I mean, everybody decides for themselves what they're, you know, what is considered an addiction. But you sound like you got this under control. You know, I, I mean, is having an intimate relationship with your girl, a consistent intimate relationship with your girlfriend, an important part of you uh, being able to not masturbate? Yes, I, you know, I really care about this, this girl. I love her and... uh you know, I don't want to just be reliant on porn and my fantasies of, you know, also like the in the back of my mind, you know, just being able to like fantasize that I'm fucking all these different women. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it just it feels like mentally it's not fair for her and it doesn't mm-hmm. feel good for me. Like it, I, I never understood when people like said they feel bad after watching porn until, you know, I like recently got a girlfriend Hmm. so where do you feel like you are at with this addiction today because you seem like you're in a good place at least to me but i don't know that's why i'm asking i feel i feel definitely like i have a control of it i i'm i'm really into habits like habits are usually my go-to like i go to the gym six times a week you know i meal prep so once I get a habit down, I'm pretty consistent with it. And um, so if I can make it, if I can make this a habit, then I I feel like I could get like a, a firm grasp on it. No pun intended. <laughs> no pun intended. Well, Christian, I I don't I don't really have any uh, anything for you because uh, it sounds like you're doing better. I mean, you're doing be- fucking better than me on this. So I'm not going to sit here and try to give you any fucking advice on how to stop watching porn when I watch porn uh, way more than you do at this point. Um, do, you, uh, do you have advice for me? Fuck it. Tell me. How do I uh, stop jacking off ten times a day? Uh, I I have no idea. Um, I mean, I, I feel like if you what I what I perceive to be it is if you think it's a problem, then it's probably a problem. And, um, and also the fact that, you know, you're not alone, you know, that's like a big thing that's like reoccurring to me, like with yeah. issues that like you kind of feel like you're all alone with your issues. And then you hear, especially on like, like I've been listening to your podcast forever and I've decided to call because this is the reason of of mine. Sure. And, uh, I said, I, I decided to call cause this is a recent event, even though I've been listening to you forever. Um, like a recent epiphany, but like hearing all the different people that you have on and like how I could relate to them and some of their issues. I'm like, wow, you know, it's a small world. Well, you've inspired me, Christian. Well, that's the thing is that I, I'm, I'm, um, I feel like I'm a functioning pornography consumer. I'm able to, it is not a, I don't, I don't, it hasn't. Like, I have other vices that have definitely gotten in the way of my, um, of my life, but porn has never been one of them. I've never been like, oh, my life would be so much better if I stopped watching porn. I have other things that my life would be better if I stopped doing, but porn, porn's never been, seemed to be one of them. But we're not here to talk about me. I'm glad to hear from you, Christian, 
that you are combating this addiction, especially, um, I mean, a month without it, I think you'll be able to to continue your cold turkey streak, um, even once once your girlfriend uh, returns from her sickness, and I think you will have a uh, happy and fulfilling life, Christian. Um, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Uh, no. Um, the only thing, like, hearing about the flags, I kind of started getting into it. Oh, yeah? What, yeah what flags started. are we looking at? Uh, for, I first uh, started looking at my uh, home state, Florida, and then my home country, Mexico. And uh, I like I like Spain's flag. It's pretty cool as well. Hold on, I'm gonna look at Florida. Hold on, I'm gonna look at Florida real quick. What's on the Florida flag? Florida's boring. It's just like a like a white flag with a like an X. Oh, it's in the like middle. an X. Okay, and then what's on this thing? Oh, it's like a X, and then a lady holding sushi and some boats. Okay, I mean that's yeah. fine. Let's look at Mexico real quick. I I know what the Mexico. Wait, the Mexico flag is just there's not like a symbol on it, is there? Yeah, it's uh, eagle. Oh yeah, there is. There's on, an eagle. Cactuses. Ah, oh, oh wait, oh wait. The Mexican flag is badass. Look at this guy. This is an eagle's fucking poning the snake. It's he's eating a snake and standing on a cactus. Like the little cactus shreds are going into the <laughs> eagle's. This is badass. I've never really looked at the Mexican flag like this. Damn. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, well, thanks for sharing. My, I'm definitely going to jack off to this later. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Gecko. Of course. Uh, Have a good night, Christian. Awesome to hear, hear from you. you too. Bye. Thanks, man. Sweet, sweet man. Doing better than me. 